Good evening to all of you. My name is Ajay Pramar and uh, now uh, in this um, lecture uh, I have a project and uh, this project uh, is going to be done using uh, majorly um, two things. One is the function and the second is actually uh, the loop. Okay, so we are going to use the for next loop and uh, with this for next loop we are going to use uh, two functions. Uh, one is the VLOOKUP function and the second is the network network days uh, to calculate the working days and also yes we are going to use the error handler as well. Very interesting. Uh, a couple of uh, things in this uh, uh, task in this project is very very interesting and I like to share it with you. Now you can see here we have here um, some of the columns are in yellow like column G, H, N, 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 Q, N, R. These are the columns which uh, we want to calculate. Now uh, I'll quickly walk you through that what we are supposed to do in this. Now here uh, first of all I'm using actually uh, the DDMM format. Uh, uh, if you are watching this video, if you are in maybe some, I think, European country or maybe in USA, uh, you would like to change the system of your date, right? Because um, uh, there I think uh, we guys use MMDDD. But this is my DDMM. So when, whenever you go and read the date, please read it as DDMM. It hardly makes any difference. We are here to learn the concept. Okay. So now the first thing which I want to do in this project is uh, we want to go and in this column G we want to extract the date from here and we don't need the time. You can see here we I'm getting here HHMM and SS if you look at the formula bar right. So I simply need here the date which is 16th of uh, December and here I need um, the 1st of December and so on. Okay the first part. The second is that um, basis uh, the date today whatever the date we have when you when you are running this uh, report you know uh, this date whatever you have calculated the difference between the day when you are running this report and you know and this date if it is somewhere between let's say 5 to 10 then the aging should come here 5 to 10 days if it is more than um, if it falls between 11 to 20 then it should be 11 to 20 you know accordingly I mean so here we like to go and give the aging okay in the column N, we simply want to say that if here I have a testing word coming, if my M2, M3, M4, one by one, all these cells, if they contain testing or hello word, then it should come here as yes, otherwise no. Remember it contains, it is not equals to. Then in the Q column, again, I want to extract the date from here, but it should come in the DDMM format. I do not need the year. So I just need here 14th, uh, and then uh, you know slash one okay so this part is very simple but here in the slab what I'm supposed to do now you have to uh, listen to this requirement very carefully now you see I need a mechanism that when I go and uh, run this report what should happen if let's say today uh, is uh, it's let's say uh, today is 14th of January right now 14th of January has Monday I know that right now company works Monday to Friday and Saturday Sunday it has an off okay so we wanted to develop a macro a program which should uh, do which should find the difference between the today date or I would say the date when you are opening this excel file and you're working on the data the difference between this date and that date suppose today is 14th of January okay so you can see here 1 slash 14 now if for first of uh, if 14th of January and here also we have 14th of January then what should happen the slab should come here as zero okay now because Monday is coming as zero so Saturday Sunday will also be zero because Saturday Sunday company doesn't work this is how the project was prepared and if the difference between uh, if, if let's say the difference is more than three days okay uh, uh, more than two days I would say so that means if today is 14 and uh, you are here uh, on the 9th of January you know you find here the date called 9th of January then and provided it is not Saturday and Sunday then this should come here as one and same then two three four at any point in time when the difference goes beyond five it should come here as about five days so we wanted to plan I mean so basically we are calculating the difference between the two dates plus we are also making it sure that if the difference is within the five days and within those five days whatever the number is being given to the Monday category the Monday day you know the same number should be given to the Saturday and Sunday 
So this was the project. Now, how are we going to do it? Let us go and understand this. Okay. So the first thing is very easy. Uh, I'll take you to the code. Look at this code. Okay. Um, now, guys, uh, we have done the loops. We have done the VLOOKUP functions also, and we have covered the error handlers as well. Okay. Somebody who doesn't know the error handlers or maybe uh, do not know anything about the loops or uh, you know the, the VLOOKUP function uh, this lecture is going to be definitely a tough one okay but still I'll try my best to explain you okay uh, now see this what I've done here is it's a very simple code actually first I am saying that the loop should run how many times the loop should run from the second row to the 11th row so I have written here the R variable which is you know R uh, 2 to 12 so that means the loop will start from 2 so when I go and run this I declared here var and r is long so let's go and uh, start the code now the first thing which we want to calculate is I want to calculate the g2 you know that right we will go and calculate first g2 then h2 and then similarly you know uh, n2 q2 and r2 and then the loop will be taking us to the third row this is the plan okay now what do you want to calculate in this gnr obviously i told you that i just need the date i do not need the time format okay so how to do that well it's very simple in vba we have a function called format and i'm, I'm using that so you say that pick up the range fr which you can see uh, 16th of uh, december 2018 12 pm is the time now i'm saying that please get this in the format called mmndd which is month and date okay now when i go and extract this so i'm simply using the format function to make sure the hhmmss should be removed so simple guys so when i go and run this you find here the date is coming right now if you have a fox eye you must be having a one question that if i'm working on the date ddmm format why the heck i am writing here mmddd and even if I'm writing here MMDDD, how come I have here 16th of December? Ideally, this should have been December 16th, isn't it? Now, here is a very, very important tip for you. It doesn't matter. First of all, my control panel, I, I went to my control panel and I changed my date you know the time settings if you do not know how to do that just simply google it how to change the date time settings it is it is so simple okay generally when uh, the laptops comes i think the date is always in the mmddd format but you can change it like i did it right now, finally now guys i'm going to use the network days what is the network days network days always tells you the working days the difference between two dates and it excludes the saturday and sunday so if you if you have ever used this network days function then you know what i'm saying but if you haven't used it you can see network days is an excel function but it can be used in vba also okay so start date and the end date so start date obviously the date uh, which is a shorter date and the end date is going to be a greater date if you have holidays you can go and select the holiday list also eventually what will you get is the working days network days always excludes saturday and sunday remember that now many of you would ask me so what, my company works on saturday so how about that then you prefer this international calendar okay in the international calendar network days dot international you have a one more parameter which is called weekend so i show you this weekend you can choose the weekends if you if your company uh, doesn't work on sunday and monday you can use this too if your company uh, works on monday to saturday and um, saturday is only your off then you can use this 11 number just go and select this okay same way you can use this in vba also okay so finally what i have done is uh, i simply uh, set that worksheet dot function network days so this is my date which is 16th of december and this is the today date when you know i'm recording this which is 14th of january minus one minus one this is your choice what but what we are doing is we are calculating the yesterday date and the difference between yesterday date and the date you have here and we are calculating the number of days so if you go and calculate the difference between these two 16th of december and you know the date 14th of january the uh, number is going to be uh, 20 but remember this does not inc include saturday and sunday these are pure working days okay and finally so you have the 20 here so i'm using the var in the var now i have my that value okay which is your this h now i'm using here simple the if conditions if the value in the var is between 5 and 10 then print this otherwise 11 to 20 and if it is greater than 1 20 days and above this is very simple i am going to quickly 
go to the next line from here now finally the other thing is i'm using that in the m column i told you in the m this two if you have if you're containing testing words so remember i'm using the like and the star before testing and after testing right we talked about this in the F series so if it contains testing and i'm using the testing capital also because in excel vba though i told you but i'm again repeating in if conditions uh, when you go and use the excel vba they are case sensitive okay otherwise you don't have to worry because the rest of the entire vba is case ins insensitive so but this is the only thing you need to take care of when you go and work with the f function so i'm saying that or 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 so you i'm using the proper lower upper all the formats and i'm also using update 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 any of the word if it contains then i like to go and say that this is going to be my yes otherwise it should be no this is pretty simple let me quickly go from here okay so you have the yes here and now now here comes the important part i told you the thing right that we need uh, to find out the slab now before the slab uh, i'm simply going in the q2 and i'm again using the same thing guys you can see here uh, this is going to extract the date from this p2 now, this will uh, go here as a ddmm and one more thing uh, the year is not coming because i use the format cells in the format cells what uh, what i did is i changed this uh, the settings you know in the format cells i did it uh, as um, dd slash mm that's it i'm not using the year okay no specific reason for that now the second uh, the next thing which is now important now how are you going to get the slab now today when i'm uh, you know it is 14th of uh, january and uh, so ideally this should be zero because if uh, 14th of january is the day when you are you know making the report and here in this uh, q column you know you have the 14th of january this should come as zero okay so what i did is now i like to take you to the last columns look at this so what i did is uh, as a MIS person, you will go and write here all the dates which you want and you go and write the numbers which you want to show in the data. Okay, so these are the categories, the slabs, whatever you want to call it. So I said that every day when you come in the morning, you have to change this because tomorrow if you come and open this, this is going to be Tuesday. Uh, then you go and write here Tuesday and then Monday and then, you know, uh, Sunday and then Saturday and the Friday, Thursday and that's it. Okay, so I'm basically considering here Mondays, uh, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday and Tuesday. Uh, Monday is not considered because that is the previous month is not going to be considered because as per the demand uh, we wanted to show uh, beyond four days or five days okay so we are taking the just last these uh, five or five days or six days okay so you have to write here the date every time because this every day this keeps on changing and monday if it is going to be zero saturday and sunday is also going to be zero and friday is going to be one which means the friday which was the you know uh, in the which which came in the last week and then thursday too and so this is the difference this is a slab and if any date which is beyond jan of uh, january 8 you know then that should not reflect anything that should simply reflect beyond five or above five or whatever okay so this is how we are sorting out this issue just go and write your dates every time you go and write this thing okay now obviously guys i don't have to tell you that why i have kept this zero and zero because as per the project requirement uh whatever the date you choose for monday that has to be given to sunday and saturday because saturday sunday are not working okay so now i'm simply going to use the vlookup in vba i copy and paste this here so that you can see how the things are going to happen okay so now see this so finally you have here uh, the project uh, this uh, the vb program so i'm using the on error go to error handler in case if the error comes because obviously there are there will be many dates here if the database is big um, that dates are not uh, you do not want those dates to fall in your this you know zero one two three four category so so this is your table so when you look up the date in this list if any date is not there then it should be uh, written there as above five or above four whatever you want to call it okay so i'm using the error handler now uh let us start this so what is happening here first i'm capturing the date which is in the qr so i'm going to capture the date this is an integer function in case if you have a date entered as text this function will convert that to a numbers finally I have the data as 43479 okay this is a an, uh, you know if you guys uh, know excel uh, we uh, if you remember the date and time chapter uh, i told you that this basically uh, uh, the date are stored as number by default and they always should be stored as number otherwise if the date is in text and uh, on the other side the database is in the number vlookup will not be able to work you cannot look up text in the number format okay so that's why i'm using the int as a precautionary measure 
The next thing which I want to do is obviously, you know, now we go in the R2 and in the R2, I'm simply going to use the VLOOKUP, capture this date 4379, which is 14th of January and go in this XFC to XFT19. This is the same, the table, you know, the last two columns and get the second column. So if I have an answer there, I will have, you know, if I have a value there, you, you know that the value is there and you can see here, right? This is the value I, the table I pasted here for your reference. So I have got the zero, which is, Perfect, right? Now the next time when I go and run this, so I go and quickly put the break code here. Again, I quick, quickly go and press F5. The entire loop had run. Finally, you are stopped here again. Now the capture, it is going to capture what? It's going to capture 12th of January. Did you put the 12th of January here? Yes, you can see here 12th of January as zero. So that means ideally when I go and again press F5, you should be able to see here zero. And again, the loop is running. Okay, I'm running this now fast. I think that uh, what I wanted to clear is I have said it. This is how you can build this project and that's how you can put the numbers or the dates of your choice and you know uh, using the VLOOKUP and error handler you can sort out this. Now 10th of January is written and 10th of, uh, 10th of the January has a number two. So we should be able to see here you know when this uh, the VLOOKUP works we should be able to get here a value. So now I have got here two. I'm done with this. I again press F5. Now, the next time when I have a date that is going to be 8th of January, 8th of January, you can see we are using here as four. So if I run this, I will be able to see. So we have got the four again. I go and press F5. Now, finally, the next uh, value we have 6th of January and the 6th of January is not here. And this is important now. Now, when this VLOOKUP works, VLOOKUP will not be able to find this value. Okay, this 6th of January. So eventually VLOOKUP will throw the error and if it is going to be an error, you will go in the error area. In the error area, I say that in the same row number, which is six now, just go and print above five. Okay, so this is the plan. If I'm not able to find any date, just go in the error area and print five, but make sure you resume next because I am not finished yet. I have to go to the next row also. So we are using the resume next. Resume next always takes you to the next line. This we uh, did in the error handler uh, section. OK, so resume next. Resume next means you will be here in the next line because this was the line which generated the error. So next you see that fantastic resume next is done. Now next again. Now the R is going to be what the R is going to be seven. I think yes. So again the seventh time this loop is going to run. Now you have that uh, 30th of December again. You will have the error because 20 30th of December we did not use again you can see I got here error in case of error I like to go and print in my R7 as above 5 and again resume next so guys this is how the entire thing you know this keeps on working and this is how you will be able to write this code but make sure one thing when you are done with this uh, loop okay for example what I'm saying if I quickly go and run this next 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 okay now see this i'm going to run this again right finally you have the error handler coming on your way and the next now code finishes now when the code finishes you don't want to go to the error handler you have completed your row number 11 so if i'm on the row number 11 i immediately want to exit because now i do not want to because if you do not write the exit sub what will happen you will go in the error handler area and in the value of the r you will find here the above five printed now r is already what r is 12 right which is this r 12 that is the reason you exit it from the loop so if you do not write the exit sub what will happen if, if I simply go and say I don't want to exit, you know, then what will happen? This will go in this line. OK, uh, over here, this uh, range R and R, whatever the value uh, you have here of the R, the, you will find here the above five printed, which is very wrong, right? This should not happen. OK, so that's how now you can see it. it this is how the loop uh, finishes off, which is not a good way because I do not want to write here the above five because my, if my loop is done, there's no question of going further and, you know, thinking that there's a possibility of an error. So once the loop is done, once it has run 12 times, 30 times, 100 times as per your code, you will, you know, cross this next. After crossing the next, you should immediately exit. So guys, 
this was the this beautiful project where we use the functions and uh, network days we look up an error handlers and of course we combined everything with the you know this for next loop i hope you, you have enjoyed this session and um, thank you so much for watching